just talk a little bit about the Rayleigh criterion. Um, and this is a criterion to, to determine whether a telescope or something like that uh, can tell the difference between two stars and one star. So the, the stars are resolved. Okay. Um, so concept zero for Rayleigh criterion is that uh, if we just have a single aperture, this could be the opening of a telescope or a slit like this, right? Um, slits like this can actually create uh, a diffraction pattern, an interference pattern just by diffraction um, because of course the light is going to spread itself out uh, and so in this case the, the this side the edges here is either zero wavelength difference or one whole wavelength the center is half a wavelength right so at this particular angle okay it would actually be dark and that's of course this first spot here right and then here um, it is uh, the center is lambda, and so the difference now comes out to to uh, an even thing, right? Okay, so this would be bright, and this is corresponds that angle corresponds to this spot here, and then at some other point it would be dark again, and then bright and dark and bright. Okay, so so the intensity on the other side of this thing would look like this, right? So we can actually draw this thing here. The, the diagram here is just trying to show you that that's the dark spot there. See that right there? Here's another dark spot. It's right there, and then here's a bright spot. Right there, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay. So it's bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, as distributed just like this, right? Okay. So the Raleigh criterion, here's the formula for it, right? The way it works is it sets it up so that we decided that these two stars, if we look at one star, we'll see this, right? These two stars are separated by the Rayleigh criterion and even though they probably could be closer together and we would know it was two stars instead of one this is the the, the, the criterion for discerning whether there's two stars or one this is clearly two stars right and what they've done here is that they've placed the maximum of one on top of the minimum the first minimum of the other if you see that the maximum of this guy this guy right here okay is actually falling right on that minimum right there okay that's what they're doing. This is the formula for this, right? So if, if we have two distant objects, star one and star two, right? And we're observing it through some aperture. This might be my telescope, right? With an aperture of B like this, right? Okay. Here's some angle between them, right? That angle is, this is the wavelength of the light that I'm using, right? This is B is the diameter of the, of the telescope, right? And then this is the angle between the two stars. Okay. Um, if you notice that, if you look at this thing, the bigger B is, the smaller that angle can be, the closer the stars can be. Right. So this is why giant telescopes. One of the reasons why we have giant uh, telescope apertures is to get better resolution. The other reason is to simply gather more light. It's got more area, more frontal area, so more photons are collected. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, there you go. So let's uh, let's. I'm going to work through an example that sh that showed up in the um, I think it's the 2010 IB test, right? Uh, space shuttle orbits at a height of 300 kilometers above the Earth. It carries two panels separated by 24 meters, right? So the you know if we draw a picture of this, right? Here's here are these two panels, right? These are 300 kilometers, right? These things are. I'm exaggerating. Here. There's two panels, panel A and panel B, right? And that that uh, they are separated by 24 meters, right? Da da da. Okay, uh, and uh, reflects light of exactly 500 nanometers toward an observer on the Earth's surface, right? So there we are observing it, right? Yay. Okay. Um, and the observer views them through an aperture of 85 millimeters, right? So that's our B, right? So what is meant by the Rayleigh criterion? Um, uh, well, we got two marks. What are we going to do for two marks? Let's see. Uh, the Rayleigh criterion is the minimum angle to be discerned. We can discern the two panels, right? Um, and uh, it's determined. I guess I'd give the formula for it, right? So here's our little formula, right? And then it says determine whether the, the images, the, the images of the panels formed by the telescope, will be resolved. So the first thing we want to do is find the Rayleigh criterion angle. Right, so let's go ahead and do theta is equal to uh, 1.22 lambda over b, right? So theta is 1.22. The wavelength is 500 nanometers. 
right? And then the um, the aperture is 85 millimeters, right? So 85 e minus three. So millimeter is 10 to the minus three, and nanometer is 10 to the minus ninth. Okay, so let's figure this out. This is going to be a very small angle, 1.22 uh, times 500 e minus nine divided by 85 e minus three. And I get that the, the, the Raleigh criterion it can discern angles all the way down to 7.176 times 10 to the minus 4th radians. Oops, 10 to the minus 6th radians. Okay? So that's the smallest angle it can discern. Now the question is, what is that angle really there, right? And of course, angles are just uh, distance divided by radius, right? So I'm going to divide 24 by... The angle is uh, 24 divided by uh, 300 times 10 to the third meters, right? Okay, so 24 divided by 300, E3 is 300 kilometers, right? Yeah, there we go. All right, and this is 8 times 10 to the minus fifth radians. So that angle is bigger. The angle separating these things is bigger than the smallest angle we can discern. So therefore, yes. All right, so I guess the three marks would be let's calculate the Raleigh one, let's calculate this angle, and then let's conclude properly that the um, angle separating those things is larger than the smallest angle we can discern. Therefore, it can be resolved. Yes. All right. So this is another key concept, if you've forgotten that, that in a circle... Right, the angle, right, that angle there is just S over R, the, the arc length divided by the radius. We, we take the 24 meters properly to be the arc length, even though it's not a curved path, because um, it doesn't really matter. At 300 kilometers, a straight line is pretty curved, right? Close enough. Yay. Point. Raleigh.